So, I've done the first half of the laser cutting. As you just saw. I want to check sizing and spacing and everything first before I commit to the the pass that does the scanning in because that really really takes a long time. It's going to take hours. So a little bit of warping on the acrylic just because of the heat I think. It'll be fine once it's all screwed together obviously. And uh, these panels are symmetrical so it doesn't really matter which way I put them. Looks pretty cool. The question is do they line up? And let's see if I've got my maths even close to correct. So obviously they are going to be sitting like that on each row. I'm not going to stick them down. I'm not going to pull all the paper off the acrylic yet. And each strip's, as I mentioned, a slightly different length. Just all the spacing is all a bit wacky. But the question is, if I place this over the top, I don't even know how I'm going to do it. I'll just start with one. Do they even sit in the boxes, let alone center? That is the question. And if the camera is in my way, I really can't see what I'm doing. Um, but let me just see if I can move this down a fraction, maybe. That looks... That looks okay. I mean, that's... They're in each square. I mean, they're sitting too high at the moment. That's okay, just because of the way it's clipped onto the bottom. I could probably get it high. There we go. Maybe. Maybe not. That's okay. I mean, that one there's not quite in the center where that one is, so maybe my measurements were slightly out. It's definitely good enough, I think, because once there's distance, I said, away, there'll be another three mil sitting here before the front face. I think it'll help obscure it, and I could always cut another one of these and make that higher. So I think overall, that is going to work, and I'm going to end up with a nice looking panel. I guess we need to get to the next step, which is doing the next laser cutting. It's 35 degrees today, folks. I'm standing in my garage laser cutting this for you all in 35 degree heat with a tin roof. Why? Because I love you all. And because every other day this week is going to be between 32 and 35 or 37, and there's no good day this week. And I really want to get this project done. So, the heat it is. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, that was excruciating. Sorry, but I'm gonna have a whinge. <laughs> it's just way too hot to be laser cutting today. It is so hot that the acrylic has bowed. It was about 50 degrees, 55 degrees or more in my garage, outside of the laser. Inside the laser, it was just insanely hot. And I thought there was a bit of a bow on this, but I just settled it a little bit, but this is really bent out of shape, which should be fine, because again, depending on which way I use it because I haven't decided yet whether that's going to be the front or whether that's going to be the front and you see the black through the clear I'm not sure but here it is it needs a bit of a clean you saw me give it a, a vacuum and I've had a given it a bit of a wipe I can give it a wipe with like a wet towel just to clear the rest of stuff off the black and it'll actually make these squares a little bit nicer right now they look like they're opaque but that's because the paper's on the back so the idea is that it would sit like this with a black front. I'm just not sure yet which way it's going to go. What I should do is take the paper off. Okay, always fun pulling the paper off the acrylic. Assuming I can 
get the edge. Okay, got it. You'll see what I mean now by using the back instead of the front. So as you can see, that's got a really beautiful finish to it, where the whole thing is glossy. It also means that these things are pushed out further. Wow, that looks really beautiful. That looks like a um, like a Japanese style door. That is going to look hot. I just don't know whether it's going to sit flat when I screw it this way. This way it's going to push it down. A bit dirty. Sorry, this way it's going to push it down and keep it flat. What I might have to do while I work on the rest of it is stick this under some weights and see if it'll flatten. Because that just looks beautiful. Okay, let's start with the electronics. Okay, it's time to stick these down and work out my wiring. I don't even know how the spacing is really going to work yet. I'm going to want to like lay them on top of each other like I spoke about already. Whether I overlap slightly, I'm going to have to, because as you can see if I don't, let's push that pixel off. So it's going to have to go up. It could be right on the edge for this first one. I hope I gave myself enough height so we don't see the top of the strip. I might not have. That would be a real shame. Yeah. See the top of the strip. It's going to be sticking up. Oh, that's going to be super frustrating. Might be able to trim it off afterwards with a knife carefully. It's just copper. It's like half a mil. Okay, well, there's nothing really left other than sticking these down, making sure they're the right way. So this is the, the front. We might do matte on the back. So I'll go this way. They might stick a bit nicer as well. So this is going to be the front. Okay. This stuff doesn't stick very well, by the way. This um, st sticky peels off after a while. And I'm going to want to I'm going to do it this way because the microphone is right in my face. The first one's going to be tricky to get on. I think once the first one's on, it'll be okay. I really need it to be centered though, if I can. I'm sorry this is so low in the camera. This is going to be the, the first potential mess. Is it even? Kind of. I mean, hopefully once it's behind everything, it's going to be fine. So I take this piece here. How does that look? I think that looks okay. That's better than I expected I'd get the first one. That is a lot, a lot of pixels, 175 to be exact. I think that's, it's going to be okay. As you can see down here, there's a bit of a, a problem with the ones on the right, their position because of the join, which is a real shame. They're not straight in line where this side is. Jury's out on how that's going to look. I guess we'll find out at the end of the project. But overall though, it's not bad, not bad at all. Okay, next step. Okay, it's time to talk about the wiring. So this is the start here. So the data is going to go this way, wrap around, keep going line by line. I need to connect all the power and grounds together. The data can wrap around, but there's no need for the power and the ground to wrap around. All that's going to do is create a chain where power comes in here and out here, and there's just going to be issues going along that. There's no need to do that. There are a couple of ways I can tackle this. I can loop the grounds together here at each end, and the power is together at each end, but there's probably no need to do that either. I could probably get away with just doing power on one side and ground on the other side. So we're talking about looping these grounds together here and maybe these powers together here. And then I just have to wrap the data around. So I'm going to make you all sit and watch me cut up, strip and tin some wires. Nah, I'm just kidding. I've already done some. <laughs> I'm not going to make you watch that. 
and here's some spaghetti in case I get hungry. Okay, this is the, for the data. I'm using some solid core wire here, some of my silicon wire that I bought from AliExpress. I'm using yellow because, oh, well, I did want to use blue. I like blue, but blue doesn't work well against the mat here. And of course, I've got black and red of these that I painstakingly cut up and stripped and did the worst tinning on ever. So I've also got um, these, I should say, which I've tinned and I've kind of hopefully bent them in place. So that is going to be my input coming in. This way I can just plug the DuPont cables from my breadboard into them for now just to make sure it works and then I can cut them and solder them directly to a board if I want to or they can just go to the bottom of pins on a micro. So let's get started doing some soldering. I think I'm going to have power down this end and ground down this end. So the plan is I, I want them to go through these holes still that I made on the side here. Uh, the reason being is if I have all the wires just hanging out here the front plate is not going to sit over here properly. The, the grid one, the one that's see-through. And so, wow, look at the terrible soldering on that. Can't even see it. Anyway, so my plan is if this, hopefully, they should be long enough. I think I made them long enough and if I didn't, I'm going to be in trouble. To, I don't know how I'm going to actually do it either because it's going to be super hard to hold in place. But just to wrap them like this behind so ground there to ground there and yeah this is going to be kind of tricky I think well that one's almost in place so maybe what I might do is start off by soldering that there's not going to be any method to this folks I'm just going to do it This is 25, what I'm going to do is, I don't want to draw too much current, so I'm going to turn the brightness down on these dramatically and then tell it to do more. I should be able to run th uh, 75 of them right now, because I've got enough wired up for that. Okay, it's just compiling now. Okay, so there's the <laughs> three strips, but as I mentioned in the first video, there is this timing problem with this library, so this might all just be an absolute waste of time. So I'm going to finish putting the data in 
So I'll have a panel and then I'm gonna have to solve the software in another time. What a bummer, huh? all of them. Let's do one power up and then call it a day. USB and power. They roll it up. Just a 15% brightness. They look beautiful except for the flashing ones. Stay tuned for part three where I hopefully solve this. I can solve it by not using an SP32 for now but then I don't get to do internet connectivity with it which is a bit of a pain so i need to work something out but thank you for watching don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and until next time i'll catch you all later bye